we talked about the Arctic Sea and the shrinking of Arctic sea ice. That thing dramatically since 1970. Okay, we're going to move to southern hemisphere currents. In the southern hemisphere, there are broad anti-clockwise gyres in the three oceans that feature cold northward flowing currents of West Southwest Africa. The Bangla current of West. Western South America, the Humboldt or Peru and of Western Australia, the Lee of Wing and westward flowing equatorial currents in each ocean. On the western boundaries of the oceans, there are warm southward flowing currents. The Anglohurst or Mozambique of East Africa. The Brazil current of Brazil and Argentina, and the East Australia current to the south, there is a broad eastward flowing Antarctic circumpolar current (ACC) that is continuous around the hemisphere. It is up to two thousand kilometers wide and two thousand to four thousand meters deep, with speeds of twenty to forty centimeters per second. It transports an enormous amount of water of the order of 125 SV. The ACC keeps warm ocean waters away from Antarctica, enabling the continent to maintain its enormous ice sheets. SSTs decrease from about five degrees、um, Celsius at 50 degrees de degrees、um, north south. So in the Drake Passage, south of South America to zero degrees into、uh, Celsius at sixty degrees south, sea surface temperature, sea surface temperature, um, in the eastern South Pacific, display cold water related to the polar current, current and cold upwelling caused by the offshore winds along the tropical west coast of South America. The cold water turns eastward in a narrow current along the equator. In the western equatorial Pacific of New Guinea, there is a warm pool with surface temperatures above 29 degrees Celsius. The warm pool is an important locus of convection and displays and displays. Um. New Guinea and pole. The warm pole is important locus convection and、uh, plays a role in tropical cyclone devel、uh, development. And then we're going to Southern Ocean. So for Southern Ocean, the water in the Southern Ocean of Antarctica have extensive sea ice in winter, covering about twenty million kilometers square kilometers at maximum. In September, the ice averages about point zero nine. Meters in thickness with a deep snow cover. In the growth in the growth phase, the height of snow depresses the ice flows, allowing sea water to flood the ice and soak the snow. This then freezes into snow ice, a process that is absent in the Arctic by late summer, March. The sea ice has. Greatly retreated, with about three million kilo square kilometers remaining, mainly in the Weddell Sea, close to the coast of Antarctica. There is extensive land fast ice attached to the land that can grow thermodynamically by heat conducti conductive losses to two meters in thickness during the winter season. The southern oceans are colder than their northern counterparts due to the presence of Antarctica in the southern ocean, which is much colder in the austral summer than the Arctic in the boreal summer. As a consequence, the location of the thermal equator and the ITCZ between the two trade winds. 
systems are displaced northward from the geographical equator to around five degrees north. The westerly winds in the southern ocean are、um, interrupted by inland masses, so high velocities are the norm. This has given rise to the designation of the Roaring Forties between. Latitude forty degrees and fifty degrees south. Even stronger winds occur in the Florida fifties, fifty degrees south, and the screaming sixty sixty degree south. Roaring forties and then furious fifties and screaming sixties. Very interesting. Okay, the International Hy Hydrographic Organization. Delineation of the Southern Ocean has moved steadily southwards since the original 1928 edition of its limit of oceans and seas. So, Austria or those of Britain as identified as a third edition. Others continue to view the Arctic convergence as a natural boundary of the South Ocean, regardless of political agreements. Sea and air interactions. So sea air interactions involve the exchange of heat, water, momentum, and gases between the atmosphere and ocean. So heat transferred include both sensible heat and latent heat. Transfers of water involved precipitation, evaporation, and horizontal atmospheric moisture transparent mid latitude oceans. Take up carbon dioxide, accounting for about one quarter of the carbon dioxide emitted by human activity, and this contributes to ocean acidification. The spatial scale of scale of air sea interaction ranges from meters to thousands of kilometer. Teleconnections time scales range from seconds to years and centuries. The ocean currents largely determine the pattern of. Sea surface temperatures, which in turn affect the overlying air masses from the subtropics, tropical maritime air moves poleward over cooler air surfaces, becoming more stable, while polar maritime air moves equal equal um equal toward over over the um equal toward move equal toward over warm. Warmer sea surface becoming more unstable and moist. In the in the northwestern Atlantic, in January, the air is greater than six degrees Celsius, cooler than the sea surface. Over the oceans, the annual and diurnal variations of temperature are much less than those over land areas in the same latitudes. This is due to the high heat capacity of water, which means it warms up slowly and cools slowly. The heat capacity of water is four point one eight five five kilojoule. Whereas that for soil is about four times lower. Of the order of one kilometer joule, as a consequence of this contrast, air temperatures over land lack solar radiation by about two hours on a daily basis, peaks around two p.m., and by a month on a seasonal basis, the solar medium, the solar medium, um, the solar minimum is at the winter solstice. December twenty first, where is the average minimum temperature for the northern hemisphere occurs around January nineteenth. So the heat capacity are different, so that the con consequences of this contrast that it's two hours for daily and a month on a seasonal basis. In contrast, sea surface temperatures have negligible diurnal change and lack solar radiation by two to three months season seasonally. On a larger scale, the oceanic the oceanic 
current systems like the Gulf Stream, the Coronal, and the Antarctic Circumpolar Current support atmospheric biroclinic bi frontal zones and help steer extratropical cyclones along them. This idea was explored extensively by Jerome Nemeyer's uh, uh, Jerome Nemeyer's in the 1970s. Sea surface temperatures in autumn and winter in the area south of Newfoundland have been shown to influence the climate of the northeastern Atlantic. Positive departures of 1 to 2 degrees Celsius lead to pressure value 3 to 4 millibar below average in the Eastern Atlantic in the following months. Jerome Nemeyer was born in Brigport, Connecticut in 1910. He trained at the University of Michigan and in the late 1930s he did research on the Dust Bowl at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. From 1941 to 1971, he was chief of the Extended Forecast Division of the U.S. Weather Bureau, now the National Weather Service, and in the 1940s developed the five-day forecast. In the 1960s, he developed monthly and seasonal forecasts and analyze the interactions between the atmosphere and ocean, in particular the role of Pacific sea surface temperature and El Nino on the climate of North America. In 1971, he joined the Script Institute of La Jolla, California and established the first experimental climate research center. In the southern hemisphere, there are three significant zones of airflow convergence, giving rise to convective cloud bands that extend south southeastwards from heat sources in Brazil, the South Atlantic Convergence Zone over Indonesia, and the Pacific Warm Pole, the South Pacific Convergence Zone (SPCZ), South Pacific Convergence Zone, and in Central Africa, the South India Ocean Convergence Zone. In all the austral summer, the SPCZ, which has been most studied, involves this South Hemisphere (ITCZ) in its tropical section west of 180 longitude and wave disturbances on the South Pacific polar front along its extra tropical section. The cloud band extends to 25 degrees south to 150 degrees west according to Vincent. The other two do not have extra tropical elements and are only linked to the continental heat sources. Their formation and maintenance are poorly understood. They weaken and disappear in winter as the subtropical high pressure cells shift equator equatorward over subpolar oceans. In both hemispheres, there is a distinctive type of weather system known as the polar low. These have a diameter of only 500 to 1,000 kilometers and a lifetime of a couple of days. They typically form near the sea ice margin there where there are steep temperature gradients and beneath an upper low uh, cold low. They spin up in tw they spin up in 12 to 18 hours. One type has a spiral pa spiral pattern of Cumulum numbers clouds around an eye an analogous to the tropical cyclone. The other is a cloud system shaped like a large comma, comma known as comma cloud. The former tends to occur in polar air, the later near to the polar front. They bring severe weather with snow and hail and winds of 20 to 30 meters per second. They dissipate rapidly when they move on shore. They occur during November, March, the northern hemisphere, and year-round in the southern ocean.